Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning, John. It's so nice to see you. I'm so excited to be in church today. Isn't it great? New Year's Day 2023. So on behalf of uh, the church here, just want to wish you all a very, very happy New Year. 2023. How exciting is that? How do you feel? How do you feel? Just be honest. How do you feel? I see those hands at the back. I feel, I feel epic. I feel happy. I feel excited. I feel expectant. Actually, I feel a bit ill. <laughs> actually, I feel a bit tired. Um, actually, I, 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 I'm not quite sure what this year is going to bring. But you know what? In everything, in everything, we know that God is with us. Don't we? We know that God is with us. But in everything, we know that God is for us. And that God will guide us. And you know, in this world that we live in, it feels so fickle. It feels so fickle, doesn't it? Even the celebrations last night and the fireworks and the, the New Year's Eve and all of that, it just feels like a, a, a puff of smoke, a firework. And to trust in the Lord with all your hearts, trust in the Lord with all that you have and all that you are. Apologies for my wife coming in late. I think she's been praying. <laughs> All that you are and all that you have, we trust in the Lord. And I love this uh, particular scripture in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 13. I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining on towards what is ahead. I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Come on, church. We press on. We press in, we press into God, and we press on. And some of you here, even this morning, you might feel like you want to lose hearts. You might feel dismayed. You might even feel disappointed. But you know, as a church, we press into God, and we press on in the things of God. And wherever he leads and wherever he takes us, we will follow him. I'm excited about this year. I'm particularly excited because Jackie and I are going to Houston on Wednesday for three weeks. Um, so we're not going to be here for three weeks and we're just absolutely buzzing. Not that we're not going to see you, but we're just excited about what God is doing and the opportunities that he brings. Uh, on uh, Monday, a week on Monday, not tomorrow, a new attenders group starts. So if you're new to Bethel, and it's really, really good, and it's lovely to see you. If you're new to Bethel, please, please speak to Andrew and Sheila, who are right at the back. They might be by the doors as you go out. If you want to come to that new attenders group, please, please, please come a week on Monday. But I'm going to pray. I'm going to hand over to these particularly handsome gentlemen. Um, they couldn't make it, so we've got Josh and Alex. <laughs> Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much. We thank you so much that we are your people, that this is your church, and we represent you here in Ponticline. We represent you in our families. We represent you in our workplaces. And Father God, I pray that you'll be honored, you'll be praised, you'll be worshipped, and you'll be glorified. We pray, Father God, that as we are in 2023, we pray that we will put you first. We will put you first in our lives. We'll put you first in everything. And Father God, as you lead us and as you guide us, we will go and we will do whatever it is that you call us to do. Father God, as we worship you this morning, I pray that this first Sunday in this year, we will worship you in spirit and in truth. And Father God, that you will do all that you want to do in us and through us. And we promise in all things that we'll give you all the honor, we'll give you all the praise, and we will give you all the glory in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Good morning. If we're able to stand, we're going to sing Father's House. Just begun. 
my father does You feel you want to find me Cause that's what my father does Ooh, lay your burdens down Ooh, here in the father's house Check your shame Yeah. 
good father It's who you are It's who you are It's who you are And I'm loved by you It's who I am It's who I am It's who I am Everyone needs compassion, love is never fading. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, kindness of Savior. The hope of nation, the hope of nation. Okay. 
pray for John now as he comes to speak. Lord, I pray you prepare our hearts, prepare our minds. Lord, prepare him to be a vessel for you to speak through. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, uh, Josh and Alex. Um, they're, they're a bit uh, croaky this morning, um, but we come as we are, don't we? Anyone else croaky? <laughs> or or cronky? <laughs> um, it, it's never easy as a pastor to know what to preach on, and many of you uh, are preachers, and some of you have been pastors and stood where I uh, stand today. And uh, I'm sure you've wondered, as I've wondered, um, what you would do on a, a New Year's Day, uh, first Sunday, when we're all back to uh, encourage and inspire, uh, perhaps challenge uh, the congregation uh, to, um, to greater uh, ministries, greater opportunities that will come uh, to us this particular year. And all I've had, really, is uh, a verse from uh, 2 Samuel 24, 24, that goes like this. I would not sacrifice to the Lord burnt offerings that cost me nothing. I would not sacrifice to the Lord burnt offerings that cost me nothing. And these are the words of David in 2 Samuel. And whether you want to uh, write that down, whether you want to uh, alter it uh, slightly to your own uh, personal needs. But for me, I altered it slightly, just simply down to, I will not give to the Lord that which costs me nothing. And so often in my life, 
I do the easy thing. So often in my life, I chicken out. So often in my life, I want the easy routes. So often in my life, I want a free lunch. <laughs> so often in my life, I want someone else to make the sacrifice so that my life then becomes easier. And spread out before us is a beautiful expression of sacrifice, the ultimate expression of sacrifice that Jesus gave his life for you and for me. This isn't a free lunch. Following Jesus isn't a, a, a free ticket to an easy life. And so if you might want to put your hands up at some point in the sermon and go, hey, John, I, I know what sacrifice looks like. I know what cost looks like. I know what difficulty looks like. But I want to tell you that sometimes we don't give our very, very best to the Lord. And I have to tell you that he gave his very best to you and to me. Is any one of you here today wearing a diamond? Come on. Any diamonds out there today? Uh, Ponce Clean's a pretty decent place. Um, some of you are nervous in waving your diamonds around. You think because we don't do a physical offering, this is the opportunity. Uh, this is John's plan. Uh, who's wearing a diamond? And then all of a sudden, Mark will run around with the, with the bin that we've got out there for tithes and offerings. He'll say, come on, put your offerings in. Who's got diamonds? Well, I wonder whether any one of you has got a diamond that uh, is like this. The Cullion Diamond is the second most expensive diamond in the world. You see, the cost of the gift relates to the sacrifice attached to it. I'll say that again. The cost of the gift relates to the sacrifice attached to it. Has anyone heard of Ratners? I'm only saying. Some of you will know what Ratners means. The cost of the gift relates to the sacrifice attached to it. Our son Luke got engaged uh, a year and a half ago and um, he said to me, Dad, I've got to buy an engagement ring that cost me a month's wages. At that time he was working in Nando's or Harvester's, so you can imagine what a month's wages looked like for him. But the cost of the gift relates to the sacrifice attached to it. And I'll say that quite often during the sermon because sometimes we don't realize that there's value attached to the gift but the value attached to the gift must relate to the cost. The Cullion Diamond was found in South Africa. Anyone from South Africa here? Thank you. I knew you would maybe put your hands up. <laughs> uh, I, uh, are you wearing any diamonds today? No, no, so you've not got this uh, diamond, the Cullion Diamond found in South Africa in 1905. You haven't got it? No, no. And even a 10% tithe might help us as a church because that diamond is currently worth 400 million. 400 million. And I don't know whether you've had carrots uh, over Christmas, but there's lots and lots of carrots in that diamond. But you're wondering what the most expensive diamond is, aren't you? You're thinking, New Year's Day, John, what is the most expensive diamond? Surely you've Googled that as well. Well, I have. The most expensive diamond comes from India, I know that we've got some lovely Indian people in our church. Well, the most expensive diamond comes from India, and it's called the Kuhinor diamond. And it means the mountain of light. The mountain of light. Well, it, it, in my mind, it actually means it's worth a lot. <laughs> or very expensive. It's 105 carats. It used to have more carats, but they've cut it down to make it purer. Now, if I had that diamond, I wouldn't cut it. I wouldn't touch it. I'd just keep it in the cupboard and say, love, we're not touching that, but that'll be all right for the kids' inheritance or if we want to go on holiday. <laughs> well, apparently, uh, the British stole it from the Indians. So apologies uh, for anyone that thinks that we've got it. It's in the British Museum somewhere, but they don't tell you where. I guess they don't want us to know because its current value is priceless. The cost of the gift always relates to the sacrifice attached to it. And to get that diamond, there's been many people killed. There's been a number of thefts attached to it because people want that money. They want that diamond because it's precious to them. 
So as I was preparing for today, I was thinking about sacrifice. What do we give to the Lord? And what does it cost us? And it's a challenge, isn't it? Because you might be sitting there going, well, John, I, I, I don't like this type of tone that you're using with me this morning. It's New Year's Day. I'm a bit tired. I saw the New Year in. I even came to your communion service last night, and we had a lovely time. There was a small number of us, but it was really impactful. And Jackie and I, we went to sleep at 2 o'clock. Well, Jackie claims she didn't sleep at all. And now she can't even speak, so I don't know what she was doing in the night. <laughs> but what does it cost you to be a follower of Jesus? What does it cost you to be a follower of Jesus? The cost of the gift always relates to the sacrifice attached to it. Where had David got to in 2 Samuel chapter 24? Well, David was deeply convicted of his sin. If you read 20, uh, 2 Samuel chapter 24, you'll see that there's, a, there's a, an event that happened there where David was convicted of his sin, where David did something wrong. And in verse 10, we see that. But the consequences of his sin led to 70,000 Israelites being killed. If you read uh, chapter 24, I was really uh, impacted by this. The consequences of what David did wrong then led to 70,000 other people being killed. So what are we going to do that's right, that's going to lead to life? And what are we going to do that's wrong, that's going to lead to death? Now, if not physical death, but spiritual death, how are we going to see this community impacted and changed? How are we going to see your families impacted and changed? How are we going to shine the light of Jesus Christ in this world today? This world is very, very broken. It's very, very broken. It's not just very broken, it's very, very broken. There's dismay and sadness and disappointments wherever I look. You could call 20 pastors to work in Bethel and there still would be more work to be done out there. Mental health, physical health, children, families, single parents, addictions, ministry to the prison, children that are hungry for our wonderful food bank, debt advice, CMA, you name it. You name a ministry and it's needed. What are we going to do that costs us? I was uh, chatting with uh, one of our lovely members recently and we're talking about church consumerism. You'd be very interested by this. I'm very excited by John's thoughts on church consumerism. And we live in a, a day where we are consumers of church. We, we have our online church. We have our physical church. We come in, we sit down, we listen to a sermon, we look at two young men singing, and we come and take communion. But what does it cost us? Have we become now a church that consumes? And we just seem to consume more and more, and we want another sermon and another life group and another prayer meeting and another social time and another warm welcome and another bowl of soup and another bread roll and another chat and another this and another that. Are we just consumers? What does it actually cost us to be part of Bethel? What does it actually cost us to be a follower of Jesus? The life, the life in which I, I, I live, I'll do what seems easy. And I want you to try and switch that to I'll do what's right. And you know there's an easy road and there's a hard road. And sometimes God will ask you to walk that hard road. Sometimes God will give you a week or a month or even a year off where he says, take a break, I want you to rest. But then there are times when he asks you to go into that difficult time, that difficult season, to walk with someone, to carry the mats, with Job to sit in the dust when Job went through all, the, all those problems. I've done enough, I'm tired. We pay you, John, so we don't have to do the work. Have you ever thought of that in a church? Wonderful, isn't it, to be uh, paid to be a minister? I'm a professional uh, minister, professional prayer, professional Bible reader, professional preacher. But my work is to enable and equip and encourage the saints of Jesus Christ. And I'll do it lovingly, and occasionally I feel like I want to give you a good kick. 
I do, honestly. Because we've become consumers. I want you to be comfortably uncomfortable. Why haven't we got new chairs? I don't know. Perhaps I thought you might be too comfortable. Perhaps you might sleep during the sermon, and you can at the top, but you certainly can't down here, and you're wondering how long the sermon's going to go on for. But when we become consumers, we then can accumulate money as a church, and then we can pay people to do ministry and the works that we think perhaps other people should do. I'd love you to be more involved. And those people that are deeply involved, you'll go, well, uh, I am John, and you don't need to worry and be concerned, but the cost of the gift will relate to the level of sacrifice. And we see across the world when churches explode. We see across the world when there are revivals. But I tell you what, there's always deep levels of sacrifice when that occurs. And I've studied revivals and uh, Jack and I were blessed to be at somebody's house last night and we're quite geeky at parties because we weren't doing the usual, I don't know what you do at a party, karaoke or twister or I don't know what normally happens at parties, but we're talking about the Welsh revival and it was a wonderful time and it was inspiring and encouraging. But to talk about the Welsh revival, knowing the level of sacrifice that went on, the length of the meetings the level of prayer, the depth of prayer, I would not give to God that which cost me nothing. Please, let Bethel never be a consumer church. I want to read to you um, the forgotten men of Christmas. Who are the forgotten men of Christmas? Well, they're the wise men, aren't they? The wise men are always the forgotten men because now we're in, a, we're in a problem because we know that they came later and every time we do a nativity story, people always remind me, well, the wise men weren't really there and there wasn't really a stable when the wise men arrived because Jesus was a bit older. So we, we never really preach on the wise men at Christmas. So I thought we'd give them a little bit of a shot this morning. And I want to read this passage from Matthew chapter 2 and verse 1. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, uh, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and came to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them, "Where where is the Christ? In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and incense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. What did it cost the wise men? Well, firstly, um, it cost them leaving their homes. So it cost them, it, it cost them finance. It cost them a locational difficulty. And some of you are in a location that you wouldn't, weren't anticipating being in. The wise men, it cost them to follow the star. The wise men followed, and Jackie and I, we had a lovely night the other night, didn't we, dear? It was about two or three o'clock in the morning, and we were watching a program about the wise men and about the star. 
Now, I don't know if this is actually factual, but I'm going to say it anyway because it was on this program. And whatever you watch on the telly has got to be right. Is that true? <laughs> well, anyway, they've uh, pinpointed that it was either a supernova or a comet that the wise men followed. And this supernova or this comet, it stopped over Herod's palace and then moved to Bethlehem. And they've got actual records that this was likely to have happened. I think it's amazing that you even see the power and the miracles of God at work, even in that time. But they followed this star. They traveled a long distance. There was effort involved in it. And you know, sometimes people jump, jump into Bethel. And you say, Bethel's an amazing church. God's doing so many things here. Do you know what I want to honor this morning? Those people that worked so hard to see this building built. You know, we walk in, Jackie and I and a few others, we walk in and go, hey, this is a nice building. Do you know what? The sacrifice and the cost to see this building built. For many of you, Bethel started 150 years ago, and you've been part of this church for all of that time, but not revealed how old you are. <laughs> I bet there's somebody that's 150 years old. And you just, you just look young, and you just keep going and going and going. But you know the sacrifice, and that many of us now, we're riding on the back of that sacrifice. But what will we bring? What will we bring to the table? What sacrifice will we make? What will it cost us? They had a threat from Herod. And to be a follower of Jesus today, we're under threat. We're under threat. We're under threat emotionally, mentally, even physically in some areas. We're under pressure. And we need to react and respond to that. And sometimes the cost of responding to that is to pray more, is to get up even half an hour earlier than you normally would and seek the face of God and fall on your knees and ask God and petition God. Hey, they met Jesus. They met Mary and Joseph, but the gifts that they brought came with sacrifice and value. The wise men brought gold, gold for a king. Isn't that beautiful? And I know that you know this, and many of you have seen this before, but gold for a king. They went and they traveled that journey. They saw that miracle star, but it took effort for them. And now 2,000 years ago, some bloke in a t-shirt's talking about them. Gold for a king. Incense or, frank, or, or frankincense for worship. Joe, you know if we just pick up, up that today? Gold for a king. Incense for worship. What does your worship smell like? What does your worship smell like to God this morning? Is it pure? Is it godly? Is it holy? Is it from that deep place? Or are you this morning here ticking a box? First, uh, first Sunday of the new year. What does it cost you to come? Some of you are tired because you've stayed up too late. You've been to parties. Some of you might have eaten too much last night. Sometimes you're tired. But what does it cost you? And myrrh for the anointing of the dead. Imagine when uh, Leanne, uh, lovely Leanne has her baby. Could be soon. Don't get too excited. Don't start laughing. I don't know about babies. But someone brings you some myrrh for the anointing of the dead? That would be weird, wouldn't it? But you know, God used these wise men to show the world who Jesus really was. Some good news as well, and some of you might not know this, but Charlotte had a baby. I think it was on Boxing Day. Charlotte is married to Leroy, and a few weeks ago, Leroy was baptized in this very pool. Imagine that, how beautiful that is. And they've called the baby John. Oh, they haven't, that's just a joke. <laughs> how beautiful is that? A brand new couple to Bethel. Two girls and now a brand new boy. Such a blessing 
when you see people come through and they give their lives to Christ and they're blessed to have this baby. Gold, frankincense and myrrh. Every gift must come with a sacrifice. The widow gave two coins. Jesus said that she gave all that she had. Stephen in Acts chapter 7 gave everything that he had. He gave his life to be a follower of Jesus. I'm going to mention someone here, and I was hoping that she wouldn't be here, but I'm going to mention Lowell at Food Bank. Lowell sacrifices to do Food Bank. I uh, was lucky enough to do a little bit of the collection at Tesco and um, uh, ended up with a parking ticket, but thank you, Lowell, for helping me out with that. Um, if you stay for over four hours, you get a parking ticket unless you tell Tesco. But I spoke to Lowell after they'd done the collection, maybe on Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday or Wednesday. And I said, how are you feeling? She said, I'm feeling absolutely exhausted. Absolutely exhausted. I think I spoke to her the week after. I said, how are you feeling? She said, I'm feeling absolutely exhausted. My body's hurting. My body's aching. But you know what? The sacrifice equals the cost. And sacrifice must take place to feed the people of this area, to feed the people of the Rhonda, to feed the people of Lanharan and Talbot Green and Ponticlean. You see, it all must come with a cost. And when you're, I'm not going to say Lowell's age, but when you're not 60 and you're the, maybe heading off towards another age a little bit later on, but not as old as Mike, <laughs> there's a cost, isn't there? And sometimes as a church, and I've done it, and perhaps I'm here with a little bit of uh, repentance. I've done it. I've watched some of our senior citizens carrying boxes and bags. I've watched them uh, with their bodies not quite in the condition that they'd want them to be and stood back and let other people do it and watched them pay the cost while it didn't affect me. Shame on me. And maybe shame on us when we watch someone pay the cost. But that cost comes with a blessing. And I know for, for, for Lal and Mike and the others of you that do food bank, there's a joy when you see those bags going out to feed those people who are in need. On uh, uh, Christmas Eve, I was fortunate enough to take some uh, parcels around to a family from Afghanistan who are living just up the road here. And um, I told Lol about it, and Lol said, did you take them food? <laughs> and I didn't. I should have. But you know what? The hearts and the passion and the sacrifice and the cost all run into one another. And as I close, I just want to introduce you to Jesus. And I don't know where you are with your faith. I don't know how you're feeling as a follower of Jesus. Whether you're new to church, whether you're not a Christian yet. Well, I just want to introduce you to the ultimate giver. You see, the cost of the gift always relates to the sacrifice attached to it and Jesus loves you so very much that God sent him from heaven born of a virgin to give his life for you and for me and for 2023 I want us to think about cost and I want us to think about sacrifice and that's not a cheerful sermon you're not going to bounce around the church. You may even walk out thinking, oh, that was heavy this morning. I was hoping for a few more jokes. Well, if you want more jokes, just have a chat with Jeff Woodington after the service. <laughs> but there's a man that he, he, he's, got, he's got jokes and sacrifice coming out of his ears. And I don't know how he does it because when I'm in a heavy mood, I'm into sacrifice. I'm into cost. I'm not into jokes. But Jesus gave his life for you and he gave his life for me. And it cost him everything. And as we come in a moment, and I'll ask the boys to come up. I think you've got a, like a special song, have you? This is the place to come.
this is the place to come. And we don't see any consumer church here. We don't see any free lunch or uh, free loading or watching other people work while we sit back and watch. We see the Son of God hanging on a cross. The Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. We see him hanging on a cross and giving his life for you and for me. And if this message gets old, if it gets dry, if it gets boring, you need to come back to the cross. You need to study the cross. You need to read about what Jesus did for you and for me. Because he gave up everything. He gave up everything. He went through the punishment, the scourging, the whipping, the humiliation. They spat in his face. They placed a crown of thorns on his head. And they did that for you and for me. And sometimes we struggle to get up in the morning and seek the face of God. We struggle to open up the anointed word of God. We struggle to operate in the fruits of the spirits. So come on, church. This year, may it, may it be a year of change. May it be a year of cost. May it be a year of sacrifice. And this time next year, may we see many, many people have given their life to Christ. So as Jackie, Jackie's going to come and help me. She's, uh, she can't speak, so I've got a good day coming up. Um, Josh, you're going to lead us now for a bit. Thank you. Better
come to the Lord's table we come not because we must but because we may we come not because we are perfect but because we are imperfect and he is working in us and through us we come with thankful and grateful hearts for what Jesus has done for each and every one of us We were dead in our sin, but through Christ, we're alive. Hallelujah. I'm going to read from uh, 1 Corinthians 11, and then uh, Jackie's going to pray, if that's all right. Thank you. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until... He comes again. Father God, we come to the one who can move mountains and who is mighty to save. We come to the one, the only one, who is the hope of nations. We come to the one who is a good, good father. Father God, we come as we are, with voices or with not voices this morning, but the one who reads and hears the cries of our heart this morning, who knows what's in our head, what's in our minds, You know it all. We don't even have to speak it out. But Father, you know that as I was walking to church this morning, and I shared earlier as we prayed, I saw past the river. And I was reminded that dependent on the river, it depends then how the river flows. And when there is rain, the river flows faster It swells and it makes a noise. And Lord Jesus, I'm aware that your church needs you. And we cry out for your blessing. We don't ask for more stuff. We ask, Lord Jesus and Holy Spirit, for more of you. And we ask for showers of blessing because that is what we need. We need the river of living water to gush, to flow, to swell, to make some noise in us and out of us, Father God, in 2023. Because I feel that your church has been silent for long enough and we need to make some noise. We need to swell. We need to flow faster, Lord Jesus, for you. And as I walked, then I heard a little bird, a tiny little bird, right up in the top of the trees, almost as small as the last leaves on those trees. But it made a huge noise that filled the atmosphere. And Father, I'm aware that your church in this land is small. We are small. We feel small. 
that, Father God, we can make one heck of a noise if we join our voices together that will fill the atmosphere for you, Lord God. And I just pray, even without a voice this morning, we would make some noise for you, Jesus, in 2023, that we will not, as your church, however small we might feel, we will not be silent. We will stand for what is what is wrong, stand up to what is wrong. For that which was wrong has now become right. And that which was right in our world has become wrong. So Father, Holy Spirit, fill us up. Fill us up. If we're empty this morning, If we're tired, after all the Christmas stuff, for some, they didn't even think the church was open today because it's New Year's Day. Lord, your church never shuts and you're not closed for business ever. And we give you praise for that. So today we come and we celebrate your death, but we celebrate even more, your resurrection power, that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives in little us this morning. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, So please, um, Jack and I are going to stand down here and we'll serve you. Uh, So please... Uh, Come forward, take a piece of bread, take a cup. um, And what I'd like us to do today is uh, take the bread when you sit back down, uh, keep the cup, and we'll drink the cup of the Lord uh, together. So uh, come uh, up in the balcony. I think you've got tables where you've got some uh, communion uh, cups set up for you. So if you just pop over and just collect one, take the wafer, eat that, and then uh, wait for us all and we'll drink uh, of the cup of the Lord together. Thanks.
take uh, the cup together. I just um, want to pray for, I don't know who it is or what's going on. I want to pray for marriages, uh, for healing in marriages. There's um, at least one couple who um, have had a really, really bad Christmas and you don't know whether you're going to stay together um, for this year and you've got all this cost stuff and this New Year stuff that I'm preaching on. You're sitting there going, I- I'm in an absolutely broken place. But I can't really tell anyone. I don't know what to do. Um, but you need to know that um, God knows and that whatever you're hiding in your niceness and you're coming out for communion, um, that you're not sure what 2023 will bring. Um, so I'm going to pray that there'll be a shift, that there'll be a supernatural shift. That's what God has placed in my heart, that there'll be a, a supernatural shift in the thing that is broken. I don't know who it is. I'm really glad when I get this, I never know who it is. So I can shake your hands on the way out and not give you the special handshake that I know because I I don't know. But I'm going to pray now that there'll be a supernatural shift uh, in your marriage and in the the problem that's there. Father God, uh, we pray. We pray for the couple or couples that that are here maybe together, uh, maybe one person is here and the other person's at home or even watching online. We pray in the name of Jesus that there'll be a supernatural shift in this marriage. We pray that the love that seems to be broken and the potential decisions around separation, we pray in the name of Jesus that you will pour your love into this couple once again. A love for you and a love for one another. And that there will be a supernatural shift in heaven that will touch earth. And that this marriage that seemed broken, that seems irretrievable, that seems lost, will be found, will be healed, will be restored, will be renewed. And we believe for this in the name of Jesus. You don't have to come out the front. You don't have to tell me. But if you need anything at all, seek the Lord and seek help on this earth. So, Father God, we pray, as we take this little cup together, this little cup of Ribena or juice or whatever it is, has so much spiritual meaning for every single one of us. We thank you, Jesus, for that you died for all of our sin, all of our sin, all of our guilt and all of our shame and that is nailed to the cross and that we've been freed from the shame and the guilt and the sin that we once carried hallelujah what a savior we pray this in jesus name amen so drink together and be thankful
Father God, thank you for this morning. Thank you for being with us. Uh, Thank you that whatever we walk uh, into this year, we know that you've walked into it first. Whatever room and whatever place we have to walk into, we know that you've walked into it first and that you are with us, that you are for us, and that you are enough in us. And I pray, Father God, for each and every person. I pray that you will bless this church. That you will bless this congregation. That you will inspire them. That you'll encourage them. That you'll challenge them. And that you'll sharpen them for battle against the devil. Devil, we tell you, right at the beginning of this year, you have no place in this church. You have no place in the lives of the Christians here. And you will not win. Because we are on the victory side. And that Jesus is King. Jesus is Lord of all. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. We trust in Him. We follow Him. We worship Him alone. And He will take us into this year Wherever it is and whatever it is, we will follow you, Jesus. We thank you for this morning. We pray, Father God, that you'll bless us, that you'll keep us, that your face will shine upon us and be gracious to us all the days of our lives. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you for coming. We've got a cup of tea and coffee uh, outside, uh, biscuits, cakes, Uh, turkey, ham, uh, quiche, pizza, whatever you want. Uh, If you do want prayer, uh, please come out the front and we'd love to pray for you as well. God bless you.